But we begin with this. Why do they hate us so much? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to that is because we're a Christian nation. It's former U.S. Army Lieutenant General William Boykin in uniform in 2002 explaining that the United States was actively engaged in a holy war against Islam. Uh, General Boykin, who was a top Bush administration Pentagon official, wasn't just explaining that we were in a holy war. He was explaining, in essence, that that was a good thing because he was fighting a holy war, too. Well, you know what? I knew that my God was bigger than his. I knew that my God was a real God and his was an idol. I knew that my God was bigger than his. Uh, General Boykin's remarks in 2002 and 2003 proved to be too much even for the Bush administration back then. The Pentagon made clear the general was out of bounds and the president distanced himself from the my God's bigger comments. General Boykin retired in 2007. What's he been up to since? Well, he's the guy Senate Republicans announced would be in their first round of witnesses to testify against President Obama's Supreme Court nominee, Elena Kagan, whose confirmation hearings began today in Washington. General William Boykin is who Republicans plan to have make the case that Elena Kagan is secretly anti-military, I guess? Or maybe he was going to make the case that she has a very, very tiny god or something? William Boykin. Uh, perhaps after their Google got unstuck, Republicans rescinded their invitation to General Boykin. Literally within hours of announcing him, Senate Republicans disinvited General Boykin from the witness list to testify this week. And that tells you pretty much everything you need to know about this particular Supreme Court nomination fight and what Republicans are trying to do here. Beltway common wisdom um, is something that, in general, I think you shouldn't trust farther than you can throw it. But Beltway common wisdom is pretty strong on this one. And it says that Elena Kagan will be confirmed as the next associate justice of the United States Supreme Court. Because everybody seems to believe that is true, these hearings are not shaping up to be a real fight about whether Ms. Kagan is going to be kept off the court. They are instead turning out to be a chance for our two political parties to show off a little bit, to show off a little bit about what's important to them about the judiciary, which does make up one third of our constitutional system of government. Uh, choosing William Boykin, Mr. My God is Bigger Than Your God, as their leadoff testimony against Elena Kagan, tells you a little something about where Republicans think they're heading here. Even if, for matters of political prudence, they decided belatedly to disinvite William Boykin, we still got plenty of indication today from the lead Republican on the Judiciary Committee, Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama, that Republicans will try to use the Kagan hearings as sort of a teachable moment to warn America yet again about the dangers of liberals. Throughout her career, Ms. Kagan has associated herself with well-known activist judges who have used their power to redefine the meaning of words of our Constitution and laws in ways that, not surprisingly, have the result of advancing that judge's preferred social policies uh, and agendas. Her actions punished the military and demeaned our soldiers as they were courageously fighting uh, for our country in two wars overseas. Ms. Kagan's college thesis on social Socialism in New York seems to bemoan socialism's de demise there. Doesn't that just take you back? Can't you just close your eyes and listen to that voice? It's like you forget what decade it is. You forget what century it is. The fun thing about the be afraid of the liberal strategy that Republicans seem to be deploying against Elena Kagan is that she's really not that much of a liberal. So that's going to be fun to watch over time. Also, it's just fun to listen to see how many extra syllables Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III can add to the word liberal to make it sound more scary. Democrats, on the other hand, seem to be trying to use these hearings as their own teachable moment. Our next guest, Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota, today kept her opening remarks tightly focused on the nominee and her qualifications. But some other Democratic senators, including her counterpart from Minnesota, Al Franken, and Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island, essentially followed the lead of Jeff Sessions. Not in dark warnings about liberalism, but in trying to use these hearings as an opportunity to make a broader case to the nation about the judiciary, about the courts. Specifically about the judiciary that we've got and the courts we've got right now. Specifically about the John Roberts Supreme Court 
and the corporations that love it too much. There is such a thing as judicial activism. There is such a thing as legislating from the bench. And it is practiced repeatedly by the Roberts Court. And it has cut in only one direction, in favor of powerful corporate interests and against the rights of individual Americans. My state has been victim to the third largest Ponzi scheme in history, and yet in 2008, in a case called Stone Ridge, the Roberts Court made it harder for investors to get their money back from people who defrauded them. The Twin Cities have more older workers per capita than almost any other city in the nation, and yet in 2009, in a case called Gross, the Roberts Court made it easier for corporations to fire older Americans and get away with it. There is a pattern here. Each of these decisions was one with five votes. And in each of these decisions, that bare majority used its power to help big business. Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island hammered the same point home by highlighting the Roberts Court's most controversial ruling to date, Citizens United. The Citizens United decision, yet another 5-4 decision, created a constitutional right for corporations to spend unlimited money in American elections, opening our democratic system to a massive new threat of corruption and corporate control. There is an unmistakable pattern. For all the talk of umpires and balls and strikes, at the Supreme Court, the strike zone for corporations gets better every day. It is a great constitution we have inherited. And you will be a great justice if you interpret our constitution in the light of its founding purpose, rather than according to the preferences of today's most powerful interests. Elena Kagan, in all likelihood, is going to be confirmed as the next Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. No sure bets, but that seems likely. The big unknown at this point is how many votes she'll get. As E.J. Dion wrote for the Washington Post today, confirmation hearings in the past have been a chance for conservatives to trumpet their judicial philosophy to the nation, almost regardless of anything about the nominee. Will Elena Kagan's hearings be the first time in a generation at least that Democrats do that about their judicial philosophy instead of the Republicans? Joining us now is Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. She's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator Klobuchar, thank you so much for joining us thank on this you, really Rachel. busy day. It's great to be on again. Um, it, it seems to me that Senate Democrats may be trying to use these hearings as a way to demonstrate to the country, make a case to the country uh, about what it means to have a very conservative court, what sort of rulings you get when you have a conservative court. Is that in part the strategy here? I think you're going to hear that. I think you'll still see when the questions start, though, Rachel, traditional questions of this nominee, of her background. Uh, but there is no denying, when you have someone like uh, Judge Posner, not exactly a liberal, that went back and looked at the justices and found that four of the five most conservative justices since 1937 are on this court right now, I don't think that's really disputable uh, that this court has grown very conservative. So my question really is, what is Elena K? going to do about this in terms of bringing some real-world experience. And I'd say two things. First of all, as came out well today, she's a consensus builder, supported by uh, Solicitor General uh, back t the last 24 years, including Republicans. Uh, she's also someone that is known at Harvard as bringing people together, diverse points of view. So maybe we could actually get some of those opinions to tilt 5-4 the other way. The second thing is that she's someone with real-world experience, and that's what I pointed out today. You know, I would love to have someone in that room uh, with those justices who says, uh, what are you guys thinking? You know, uh, you think Lily Ledbetter, uh, when she was discriminated against for years and years, was supposed to, in a few months after they started giving her male counterparts higher salary, was she supposed to rifle through their drawers and look at their pay stubs? Was she supposed to start asking them, hey, what are you guys making? Uh, so I think having some real world experience and having someone who is incredibly smart, but at the same time gets along with people to bring some of that experience to bear in those discussions where you and I can never go, I think that'll be a good thing. 
in, in, in terms of the overall ideological balance of the court, that interesting point Judge Posner made, uh, and uh, the, the observation that others have made that Justice Stevens himself has even made, that essentially with each new justice who has been nominated uh, over the past several decades, the court has shifted a little bit to the right. Nobody has been more to the left than their predecessor uh, in a very, very long time. I wonder if it will be an appropriate line of questioning to determine whether or not she's actually going to be to the right of Justice Stevens on many of the social issues that tend to mark a justice as liberal or conservative. We know everything is really open court uh, for questioning at the Judiciary Committee, so I think you're going to hear all kinds of questions. I think she has pretty much said she's not going to say how she's going to rule on a specific case. Uh, but I think it's going to be very interesting because in her uh, hearing when she was up for the Solicitor General job, she was fairly open, uh, answered questions well, and so I think you'll hear a lot of good questions on both sides of her on all these issues. But again, uh, your point, one of my favorite examples of this court